epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Dinosaurs, aliens, pirates, Abraham Lincoln, all of these animatronics and more right here on Theme Park Crazy. We've talked about theme park animatronics before on this channel. These masterpieces of engineering make an excellent addition to any roller coaster, dark ride, or other attraction. But which ones are the best of the best? For this video, I asked my viewers what the greatest animatronics of all time are. So as voted on by the fans, here are the top 20 animatronics ever made. Number 20, the alien from the extraterrestrial alien encounter at Florida's Magic Kingdom. Out of all the animatronics on this list, this is the one we know the least about. Nevertheless, we do know enough about it to tell how amazing and advanced it was. From 1995 to 2003, the extraterrestrial alien encounter was by far the most terrifying Disney attraction of all time. The ride's story centered around a teleportation demonstration going wrong. Instead of an alien chairman, a menacing monster shows up in the glass tube instead. Based on leaked behind-the-scenes photos, night vision guest video, and an official toy figure, we have a good idea of what it looked like. For most people, the design was anything but cute and cuddly. Packing razor-sharp teeth, large wings, a scorpion stinger, and big, meaty claws, this animatronic looked like something out of a Godzilla movie. Funnily enough, the 2000 movie Godzilla vs. Megaguirus had a similar design for its titular villain. The claws, the stinger, the wings, the face, you really have to wonder if Toho was inspired by the Disney attraction. Despite its closure in 2003, this ride is still fondly remembered for its intensity and intricate design. The animatronic was aided by effects inside the seats themselves. Binaural sound, as well as effects simulating the alien breathing on guests' necks, added up to make this animatronic feel alive when in reality, it never actually left that glass tube. It just sunk down into the bottom when the lights were out. The fact that they put so much effort into an animatronic you can barely see in the dark shows how Imagineers went above and beyond, and for that, you've got to give them credit. Number 19, the Carnotaurus on Dinosaur at Florida's Animal Kingdom. Yet another terrifying animatronic, or rather animatronics, are the ones found on Dinosaur at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The ride's story focuses on a trip back in time to find an iguanodon, but this bonehead decided it would be a good idea to send you back in time to minutes before the infamous asteroid hit Mexico. The story leads to a high-stress, high-intensity dark ride with sharp turns and fast movements. And because most of the ride is in the dark, you're unlikely to see the Carnotaurus until it's right next to you. Funnily enough, a real Carnotaurus is vastly different from the one featured on the ride. In reality, a Carnotaurus is only slightly taller than an average person, with smaller horns and arms so tiny they make the T-Rexes look like bodybuilding champions. You can partly thank the legendary Imagineer Joe Rohde for this design. According to Rohde, he and his team wanted to feature some more obscure dinosaurs for the ride rather than the standard T-Rexes and Velociraptors. After choosing the Carnotaurus, however, they realized that the legs needed to be thick in order to support the figure's weight. In turn, the frame itself needed to be thicker as well to go along with the legs. The result was a menacing, thick-skinned dino with bigger horns, bigger arms, and a much more frightening appearance. These massive animatronics towered over guests and were no doubt a main character in children's nightmares. Though the animatronics haven't been in the best condition lately, they are absolutely astounding when they do work. And though the ride's future is in doubt with the upcoming Moana expansion plan, you can still check out this excellent attraction at the time of this video's release. Number 18, Jack Sparrow on Pirates of the Caribbean at various Disney parks. In 2003, Disney took a chance and based an entire movie off of their Pirates of the Caribbean dark ride. On paper, the idea seemed laughable, but the resulting film was widely praised by critics and audiences alike. The success of the film admittedly led to sequels that progressively got worse over time, but it also led to a notable change to the ride that started it all. The film's lead character, Captain Jack Sparrow, was added to the Disneyland and Disney World versions in 2006. Specifically, these animatronics were known by Imagineers as A100 models. First introduced on the defunct Great Movie Rides Wicked Witch of the West, this variety of animatronic has a complex system of joints and variable speeds. All of these make the A100 much more lifelike, adding a whole new level of immersion to the ride. I can say from experience that when I first saw this figure, I seriously thought it was a live actor. 
and I was flat out blown away by the details and movements. Not all Disney Dark Ride changes are well received by everyone, but this is an exception. Number 17. Hondo Onaka on Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run at Florida's Disney's Hollywood Studios. Talk about a mouthful. Following the hydraulic A100 model and its successor, the all-electric A100 Plus, was the A1000 animatronic. The first one of these figures to debut in a Disney park was of Star Wars character Hondo Onaka. Debuting alongside the Galaxy's Edge themed area at Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios, this animatronic appears in the pre-show area for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. This extremely advanced figure uses what's known as a pancake motor to power its movements. No hydraulics are necessary here, and with an array of joints and fluid posing, this animatronic was one of the most recent innovations in Disney Imagineering. This is another animatronic that's often confused for a live actor, and just looking at his movements, it's clear to see why. This figure has a total of 51 functions, including 10 in the head alone. By far the most immersive feature is the bendable knee, a seemingly subtle feature that actually adds a lot to the figure's realism. Even if you're someone who doesn't know a lot about Star Wars, including myself, it's truly impossible to deny that this figure is a true triumph in engineering. Number 16, Kylo Ren on Rise of the Resistance at various Disney parks. This is yet another A1000 animatronic that portrays a Star Wars character, this time on the Rise of the Resistance ride. First opening in 2019, this dark ride has guests face off with the First Order. The engaging story that unfolds is brought to life with state-of-the-art special effects and animatronics. On the ride, guests will face off with Kylo Ren, one of the franchise's main antagonists. Once again, this figure features fluid motions and a wide array of movements just like Hondo Onaka does. But this animatronic has yet another immersive feature. Towards the end of the ride, the wall behind Kylo Ren gets blown away and he's seemingly sucked into space. The way his clothing moves as he stumbles backwards really gives the impression that he's being sucked right through that hole in the wall. This animatronic is a huge step forward in technology and ride theming, and don't be surprised if you see more like it in the coming years. Number 15, King Kong on Skull Island Reign of Kong at Florida's Islands of Adventure. Back in 1986, Universal Studios Hollywood introduced the King Kong Encounter. This segment of their tram tour took guests into a thrilling set piece straight out of the 1976 remake of King Kong. For the time, this figure was insanely impressive, sporting both a massive scale and a wide array of movements. Unfortunately, the figure was destroyed in a massive fire in 2008 and replaced with a 3D screen tunnel. When it came time to introduce a new King Kong ride to Islands of Adventure, it was decided to beef up the screen tunnel experience into a more complete attraction. While most of the ride does center around a screen tunnel, it does feature a pretty grand finale. At the end of the attraction, guests encounter a full-scale bust of King Kong himself. This massive, impressive animatronic is a worthy successor to the deceased Hollywood version. The texturing, facial movements, and overall fluidity make it feel like you're looking at a real-life gorilla. Just look at the way the nostrils and the mouth move. It really is the closest you'll get to encountering a real-life giant gorilla. Interestingly enough, this won't be the only King Kong animatronic on this list, so stay tuned. Number 14, Maleficent's Dragon Form from the Disneyland show Fantasmic. Fantasmic is undoubtedly the most iconic nighttime show at any of the Disney parks. First debuting at Disneyland in 1992, this show takes the audience on a trip through Mickey Mouse's imagination, all leading up to a battle against numerous Disney villains. The final battle of the show features Maleficent transforming into her dragon form. Originally, the design of this dragon left much to be desired, consisting of basically a dragon head on a stick with what looked like trash bags hanging off of it. Although the version at Disney World still uses this inferior design, Disneyland was given a new and improved version in 2009. This dragon much more closely resembles the one from Sleeping Beauty, and that makes this show much more epic. Towering at 45 feet tall, this dragon is also able to breathe fire, making her that much more awesome. Being able to see this show in person is an experience you simply cannot replicate by watching it online. And that's especially true for seeing this dragon breathe fire in person. If you're planning a trip to Disneyland, make sure you scout out a good spot to see this nighttime show. Number 13, King Kong once again, this time on Kongfrontation at Universal Studios Orlando. 
From a technical perspective, this animatronic may not be as advanced as the one on Skull Island, but many park fans argue that its utilization was even better. First debuting as an opening day attraction in 1990, Confrontation took guests straight into the 1976 King Kong remake. The story involved King Kong attacking Roosevelt Island, with guests being evacuated through the island's tramway. Along the way, guests came face to face with the massive gorilla. Unlike the one on Skull Island, this was a full body scaled figure, and you could see the forearms, hands, and lower body. On this ride, two figures would appear. The first swiped its hand at the tram, seemingly causing it to drop. The second one though seemed to pick up the tram full of passengers. The way the animatronic's motions were directly integrated with the ride experience made it way ahead of its time. Not to mention the fact that like its predecessor in Hollywood, this figure had banana scented breath which was a fun little addition. All of that said, the engineering prowess that went into this attraction is undeniable. Though the ride closed in 2002, it's still remembered fondly as one of the greatest defunct attractions ever. Number 12, the T-Rex on Jurassic Park River Adventure at Universal Studios Hollywood and Islands of Adventure. The original Jurassic Park movie needs no introduction. One of the biggest films of the 90s, this Steven Spielberg masterpiece inspired a global surge of dino mania. Interestingly enough though, this ride was actually inspired by the original book by Michael Crichton. Spielberg contacted Universal almost immediately after the book's publication with the idea to build the attraction. After years of development, the ride first opened in Hollywood in 1996, before coming to Universal's Islands of Adventure in 1999. This attraction consists of a boat ride through Jurassic Park itself. Along the way, guests encounter a number of advanced dinosaur animatronics, some of which inspire some severe submechanophobia. After a hadrosaur knocks the boat off course, passengers enter a raptor containment zone, which has been overrun with raptors, dilophosaurs, and of course, the almighty T-Rex. Just before the final drop, the T-Rex would swing out from behind the waterfall, baring its teeth at guests before the final splashdown. At the time of its debut, this animatronic was incredibly detailed, with smooth, fast movements and even her tongue noticeably moving. As the years went on, this animatronic's movements did become less fluid, but it's nevertheless a classic sight no matter which version of the ride you're on. Number 11, The Goblins from The Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is widely considered to be one of the most successful, popular, and elaborate theme park lands out there. Ever since its introduction to Islands of Adventure in 2010, this land has been drawing in massive crowds and plenty of Potterheads. A few years after its opening, the decision was made to expand the land by clearing out the Jaws ride in the neighboring Universal Studios Orlando and replacing it with a Diagon Alley themed section. This new themed area included all of the hot spots from the franchise, as well as a fire breathing dragon and a new roller coaster dark ride experience. Interestingly enough, these animatronics are not found on the ride, but instead in the queue area. After entering Gringotts Bank, you will see the Goblin Bankers, exactly as portrayed in the film series. The precise attention to detail on these animatronics is astonishing, from the hair to the facial features to the very subtle movements. They could have easily just put a bunch of statues there, but there are several of them in this bank, making it feel like you got sucked straight into the movies. Even better, the nearby Gringotts Money Exchange attraction has an animatronic you can actually talk to in real time. It's not every day that you could talk to a goblin while exchanging your money, but this is just further evidence of how undeniably amazing the Wizarding World is. Number 10, Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for Sunken Treasure at Shanghai Disneyland. In 2016, Shanghai Disneyland opened to the public. Along with it came some of the most up-to-date and elaborate attractions ever built by Disney. One of the most acclaimed dark rides to open there was a new Pirates of the Caribbean ride named Battle for the Sunken Treasure. Unlike its predecessors, this ride is more directly based on the film franchise, prominently featuring Jack Sparrow. Being newly constructed, it also features newer technology and more advanced effects. At one point of this ride, guests will enter Davy Jones' lair and meet the villainous octopus man himself playing a pipe organ. This animatronic directly resembles his appearance in the film, and has every detail from the tentacle beard to the lobster claw hand. This figure is Hollywood CGI brought to life, and the voters agree the details are everything. The only suggestion I have is to put a locker full of used socks on the side of him, now that would make the details complete. 
Number 9. The Bunyip animatronic from Murray Bridge, Australia. For the first time on this list, we're taking a break from Disney and Universal and heading to the rural town of Murray Bridge in South Australia. This animatronic may not be the most advanced one on this list, but it's undeniably a massive cultural and personal achievement in its own right. First built in 1972, this animatronic was the creation of a man named Dennis Newell. Newell wanted to promote the local area's Wee Rama Festival, which he sat on the organizing committee of. The animatronic itself portrayed a creature known as Bert the Bunyip. In Aboriginal mythology, the Bunyip is a man-eating aquatic creature that lives in rivers, lakes, and swamps. The Bunyip story was especially important to the Ngarrungarri people of South Australia. Known by this group of people as the Mulyawonk, the story of this creature was used to keep fishermen from taking more than they needed, as well as preventing their children from getting too close to unsafe waters. As such, Newell's project was something like a parade float to celebrate the local culture. Originally conceived as a coin-operated animatronic, this creature would rise out of the water and roar at onlookers before sinking back down. As simple as it was, at the time, nothing like this had ever been seen in Southern Australia. So upon its opening, the animatronic drew huge crowds and thousands of dollars. Ever since its construction, the Bunyip has proven to be an extremely notable tourist attraction. Later on in its lifespan, the Bunyip was renamed Bertha and given a baby. Though it had started to age into absolute nightmare fuel in the 90s, a makeover breathed new life into this figure, and it remains at Murray Bridge today. In recent years, the animatronic has received global attention among some mechanophobia enthusiasts, and has been prominently featured on social media as a terrifying underwater animatronic. Recently, the town of Murray Bridge celebrated the animatronic's 50th anniversary, with Ngarangari representatives and authentic Aboriginal performances. The fact that this animatronic was made by one man to celebrate Aboriginal culture makes it especially noteworthy, and the fact that a small town figure has achieved this much fame is absolutely awesome. Number 8. The Cast of Cars on Radiator Springs Racers at Disney's California Adventure If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I've made a fair share of jabs at Cars 2. However, Cars 1 and Cars 3 are solid Pixar films, and the world that the animators built is well worthy of an entire themed land. Hoping to revitalize the previously failed California Adventure Park, Disney premiered the billion dollar Cars Land in 2012. This land's main attraction is Radiator Springs Racers, a giant slot car ride similar to Test Track at Florida's Epcot. Throughout the ride experience, guests will encounter full-scale animatronics of the car franchise's characters. These figures do an amazing job of bringing these characters to life, especially the animatronics of Mater and Doc Hudson. They even managed to make Hudson's bumper mouth move like in the movie. Some of the figures have projected mouths, but the more impressive ones are the ones with sculpted mouths. But for all of these figures, the time, effort, and engineering work put into them is infinitely laudable. These animatronics, along with the scenery and thrilling ride experience, make this arguably one of the best Disney attractions of all time. Number 7. Abraham Lincoln from Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln at Disneyland Yep, the man on the $5 bill has in fact made this list. Just like the man the animatronic portrays, this figure is historically significant. Shortly after the first audio animatronics were conceived for Tropical Serenade, Walt Disney wanted to go from birds to human figures. Disney had always been a fan of Abraham Lincoln, and had even recited the Gettysburg Address to his class as a kid. Disney originally wanted the attraction to feature numerous presidents, but technical limitations at the time made that impossible. Instead, he would end up working on a full-scale Abraham Lincoln animatronic for the 1964 World's Fair. In order to make Lincoln's appearance as accurate as possible, the face mold was created with the help of an actual sculpture of Lincoln's face from 1860. For the first time in a century, Abraham Lincoln would be brought to life in front of a live audience. The show at the World's Fair premiered to instant acclaim, with the most notable feature being the animatronic's ability to rise from its chair. For 1964, this was an enormous achievement. Imagine how many people at the time thought this was a live actor. The show would later open at Disneyland, where after several changes, it still operates under the long name of The Disneyland Story Presenting Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. The original hydraulic animatronic has since been replaced with an all-electric one, but the original still exists in the Disney archives as it should for being an important piece of animatronic history. Number 6. Jaws from Jaws the Ride at Various Universal Parks 
This right here is the king of all theme park sub mechanophobia. Originally debuting at Universal Studios Orlando and still operating at Universal Studios Japan, this animatronic is a crown jewel in underwater engineering. Originally opening in 1990 in Orlando, Jaws the Ride took guests on a tour around Amity Island, but after spotting a tour boat destroyed by Jaws himself, they are chased down by the famous Great White Shark. Initially, the ride debuted with a detailed and versatile shark animatronic. One unique feature was the way this shark interacted with the ride boat, seemingly dragging it across the surface of the lagoon. On another part of the original ride, the shark seemed to go underneath the boat before it seemed to explode into shark guts. This version of the ride was unfortunately too complicated for the technology to handle, and it constantly faced downtime. So shortly after the original opened, it was replaced with a more reliable rendition. The new shark animatronics were reimagined with the help of Oceaneering, a company that specializes in deep sea exploration. The result was yet another triumph in underwater engineering. The way the shark could surface above the water as fast as it did made for a much more terrifying ride experience. You really couldn't see the shark coming until it was right next to you. And there wasn't just one shark animatronic on this ride either, there were several of them scattered throughout the course. The most memorable ones being the shark in the boathouse and the sharks at the end. After biting a power cable, Jaws is literally grilled to a crisp, with sadly no mango salsa or red beans and rice in sight. There was even a burning shark smell to go along with it, though I don't remember it being that mouth-watering. Truly an impressive creation. As mentioned earlier, the Jaws ride in Orlando was replaced by Diagon Alley, but the one in Japan is still alive and well, so if you were a fan of this ride as a kid, a trip to Japan is highly recommended. Number 5. Sprulkisboom at the Netherlands Efteling In yet another break from Disney and Universal, here is an extremely notable animatronic from Efteling. Officially named Sprulkisboom, this name translates to fairy tale tree in English. As implied, this tree tells various fairy tales to guests passing by. For a tree, he really does have expressive facial movements, and the engineers did a great job here. Out of context, you'd honestly think this was a new Disney attraction from the video. Just look at the way his lips move along with his eyes. The fine folks at Efteling are world famous for their a level theming, and they really deserve more recognition outside of Europe. The idea of an animatronic tree seems simple on paper, but Efteling really hit the engineering out of the park with this one. Number 4. Indominus Rex from Jurassic World Adventure at Universal Beijing In 2021, the Universal Beijing Resort debuted to instant acclaim from park guests. Among its attractions are the Transformers-themed Decepticoaster, a Kung Fu Panda-themed land, and a new Jurassic World attraction. This hot-on-the-scene dark ride features several new innovations in theme park technology. But the greatest one of them all is by far the Indominus Rex. While the aforementioned T-Rex is affixed to a swinging mechanism, the Indominus Rex actually appears to chase the passengers. Apparently, the dinosaur is actually hooked up to a rotating device, but you'd swear you were actually being chased on this ride. It's hard to put into words just how astounding this is from a theming and engineering perspective. Even besides the chase feature, the animatronic's movements are both fluid and precise, making it close to a real-life encounter with a dinosaur. Universal truly brought their A-game to this park, and even if you don't like the Jurassic World movies, you have to admit this is one incredible ride. Number 3. The Yeti from Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom Earlier on this list, we mentioned Imagineer Joe Rohde. While another one of his incredible creations for Animal Kingdom was the Yeti inside Expedition Everest. First opening in 2006, this heavily themed roller coaster was once the most expensive coaster on Earth, with a $100 million price tag. Adding up to that price was the elaborate Himalayan facade, as well as Disney's most ambitious animatronic at the time. This big hairy dude stands at 25 feet tall, or over 3 Sun Ming Mings. He also weighs a whopping 20,000 pounds, with a massive boom system needed to move his body. This animatronic made its debut to unanimous praise from Disney Park fans. The fact that such a massive animatronic could move so fluidly was a true testament to how much of a powerhouse Disney Imagineering is. Unfortunately, its ambition was eventually its undoing. Supposedly, the figure's massive weight eventually led to problems with its foundation, and in an effort to prevent catastrophic damage to the attraction, the Yeti's movements were turned off shortly after the ride opened. Unfortunately, the only way to fix the Yeti would have apparently required tearing a good chunk of the mountain out, 
since the animatronic system was said to be built into the structure. In the meantime, a strobe light was put in place to simulate movement. Disney hasn't commented on the specifics of why it stopped working. However, considering it's only a few seconds of the ride, it's likely that Disney decided such an expensive, lengthy, and complex repair was not worth the money. Regardless of its condition though, there's no doubt that this Yeti was still a praiseworthy achievement. Even if it didn't go as planned, the effort is still more than worth noting. Number 2, The Shaman of Songs from Navi River Journey at Disney's Animal Kingdom From the record-breaking originals of the smash hit sequel, Avatar has proven to be one of the most successful film series of all time. In 2017, director James Cameron and Disney introduced the public to Pandora, the world of Avatar at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Opening with this new themed land were two major attractions, the ultra-immersive Flight of Passage and a new aquatic dark ride named Navi River Journey. This boat ride takes guests through the sacred waterways of Pandora, where various bioluminescent creatures are on display. Towards the end, passengers will encounter the Navi Shaman of Songs, who performs a musical act from beneath a tree. The Shaman was the first step up from the original A100 hydraulic models, and was known as an A100+. As mentioned earlier, this new model traded the cumbersome hydraulic system for a new electric one. This allowed for much more advanced movements than its predecessor. It was a huge step forward for Disney, and even still, this animatronic is said to have more functionality than even the new A1000 models have. While Honda Onaka has 50 total functions, the Shaman's body alone has 39 functions while her face has 42. That's 81 functions total, all leading up to the most realistic looking facial expressions you can find on an animatronic. And with the character's emphasis on theatric movements, it's no wonder why this figure is so highly regarded. This animatronic alone is well worth getting on this ride. Number 1. The Spider-Man Stunt-Tronic from the Spider-Man Stunt Show at Disney's California Adventure A while back, Imagineers started looking into how to replicate human stunts with their animatronics. In 2018, they introduced Stickman, a seemingly simple robot that was able to perform acrobatic maneuvers in mid-air. To do this, the robot used what was described as a gravity-driven pendulum launch, along with carefully timed posing. From this, Imagineers were able to introduce the Stunt-tronics. These robots were designed to bring incredible Hollywood stunts to life that would otherwise be dangerous for a live performer to replicate. You'd expect something like this to be like throwing a Barbie doll into the air, but the advanced self-correcting system makes the figure's movements incredibly realistic. Like, probably more realistic than any other animatronic. The first introduction of this figure to the parks was the opening of California Adventure's Avengers Campus in 2021. During the Spider-Man stunt show, Peter Parker demonstrates his web-slinging abilities. In an instant, the stunt-tronic is launched into the air on a string, looking like a live actor in a Spider-Man suit. This jaw-dropping stunt show has received widespread acclaim, and it's clear to see why it came in at the number one spot. The fact that engineers were able to get the trajectory of a flying robot just right is… well, it's hard to put into words. But it's amazing overall. And you really have to give credit to all of the programmers, engineers, technicians, artists, and everyone else who made these machines possible. So if you've worked on these animatronics, or if you're planning on working on these animatronics, or even if you haven't worked on these and you're in the fields in general, keep up the great work. And now it's time for the comment shoutout program. This is where I take 5 random comments from my previous video and read them out. These comments come from my video on Google Earth theme park finds. Catherine Zimmerman says, Man, I'm so bummed the DK coaster is opening after I move back to the US from Japan. It looks awesome. Randflame says, Imagine going to a Waffle House in Ohio. Crewfest Roblox says, The entrance of Mayan Mindbender from Astroworld is at Mammoth Lake in Lake Jackson, Texas. It's GRC says, These discoveries are really fascinating to be honest, and new fear acquired, falling into the 10-foot animatronic shark pit. Finally, Vortex Luigi Rosalina 55 says, I bet there's more than 10 of these things laying around Google Earth. If you want to see your words in my next video, leave a comment down below and it may be selected. Please note though that inflammatory or spam comments will not be read. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description.
Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. And I'm on TikTok for reasons I'll explain in a pinned comment. This is Theme Park Crazy and I'll see you all next time.